but if we could bring about <coughs> a method whereby <coughs> the the intracranial forces could themselves expand the anatomy of the cranium to its maximum degree. Now, if it's in a contorted, as we have talked about, state, it's not in its maximum degree of anatomical openness. And therefore, and of course, then that finally led to what we're now doing, whereby we are using the, the cranium's intracranial forces to do what should have happened fully at birth. Mm -hmm. We, In a way, you could say we are rebirthing our patient wow. when they're 40-year-old or 50-year-old or 60-year-old or whatever, because we are doing what should have happened fully at birth and which didn't. Yeah. So we are... We are at this stage in their life, at this age in their life, we are using this technique which was just done to produce this uh, directional force on the occipital inferiorly, which is the way it needs to go to go into the anatomical phase or mm -hmm. anatomical status, mm -hmm. along with that, the forces within the head which are, are wanting to... to to ex explode outwards mm -hmm. and those two things together then change everything, change all bones at the same time, not just a couple of bones which is a segmental thing, but the whole lot, the temporals, the, peri the parietals, the ethmoid, the sphenoid, the whole works all going into that because only by releasing the anatomy and opening the anatomy can we change the physiology, which is the involuntary movement. It's locked into the anatomy. Another beautiful observation in what you just 